This is the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado LT, but it's a trail boss. In this video, we'll talk about how this thing is to drive on the road, how it is to live with, and of course, we're gonna meet up with our friend Bobby and give it a really good go off-road against its main rival. But before we do all that, let's see what this Silverado is all about. In Canada, it starts at $54,500, but as tested, it's $72,000, which means it costs exactly as much as its main rival. Under the hood, you get a V8 5.3 liter with some pretty clever fuel management systems, and it makes 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. For 2020, you'll also be able to get the 6.2 liter V8, but for 2019, the 5.3 it is. The engine is mated to a very smooth, very good, and totally adequate eight-speed automatic transmission, which is also hooked up to a two-speed transfer case because this thing is obviously four by four. You do get a four high and a four low mode, as well as a two high and a sport mode and a trailer tow mode. And when you're towing a trailer, you can uh, use these uh, buttons here to select the top gear you wanna use. The engine provides adequate performance. I mean, you gun it, downshift's quick enough, and then it just goes. I mean, at no point have I ever thought to myself, I need more power. It's totally adequate. It might not win any drag races, but hey, it's a pickup truck. The Trail Boss's exterior is probably the highlight. It looks really badass. I mean, it's a really good looking truck. And especially the Trail Boss with the off-road appearance package and those really beefy uh, steel skid plates or steps or whatever you wanna call them. They're amazing. The Trail Boss trim adds the off-road equipment to the LT, which includes a two-inch factory lift kit. Obviously, that builds upon the Z71 off-road package. It includes a mechanically locking rear differential, skid plates underneath, Rancho shocks, 18-inch wheels with Goodyear off-road tires. But then again, as usual on a pickup truck, there's no recovery point on the back. Come on, guys, put a recovery point on the back. The truck we're looking at today obviously has a crew cap, which means inside it's extremely roomy and, you know, it will fit anything you throw at it. I mean, if you use it for your family, it's going to be a very roomy family car. If you use it for work, which, save that, we'll talk about that later, uh, it's going to be very comfortable for your crew with their big boots and big jackets. Everybody's going to fit in here and everybody's going to be very comfortable because these seats are excellent. The materials inside are okay. Fit and finish is pretty good. There's no unwanted soundtracks. And even though it doesn't look as fancy as some of the competition, it's actually pretty nice in here. The infotainment system has an eight inch touchscreen and really it does everything you need. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Unfortunately, not wireless. And there's no wireless charging pad in the car. There's plenty of spots to put your phone, like right here, but no wireless charging. Ergonomically, everything is very nicely laid out. All the buttons are correctly positioned, easy to reach, and big enough so you can press them with gloves, which is pretty important. The only drawback of the interior is probably the small sunroof. If you had a longer panoramic sunroof, it would have been much better. On the road, the Silverado is actually really comfortable. Even this Trail Boss with the knobby tires, it doesn't get very noisy. On the highway, it barely purrs just over 15 to 1600 RPM at the speed limit, of course. It's a very comfortable thing to be in and the Rancho shocks on the road provide really good comfort levels. I mean, this is a very, very comfortable cruiser. I know some of you are gonna hate the 5.3 and they're gonna say, oh, the 6.2 is so much better. Yeah, but listen to this. My average fuel economy for this past week has been 14.9 liters per 100 kilometers. And that was verified at 480-ish kilometers at the fuel pump. And the pump with the kilometers I've driven completely agreed. It matched up with what the car was reporting, which is very rare and I highly appreciate when trucks do that. So the fact that it runs on regular and doesn't burn a hell of a lot of fuel means that this thing is gonna be quite affordable to run, which is another really good point for a pickup truck. Around corners, obviously, the grip is not there. It's a pickup truck and it has knobby tires. But you know what? It's actually nice to drive. It leans, but whatever, who cares? It's a nice, it's a truck with road presence. I mean, 
the driving position is commanding. You see everything around. You have blind spot monitors, good enough camera for backing up and everything. I like it. You even have a power window for the far back. The bed in this truck has the rubber floor and the tonneau cover, and the tailgate opens really nice and smoothly. It's, uh, it's really cool. Check this out. My kids were playing hide and seek inside, and uh, they're pretty excited to be back there, so my kids are happy. Your cargo will be thrilled. We promise not to be naughty. Let us out. Okay. Yay. Also keep in mind that the tethering points, like the little hooks in the bed, are pretty heavy duty and won't bend that easily. Obviously, the Silverado is really good at towing, and the towing capacity is that much. And, and there's even a dedicated mode for that. Or you can just twist the same knob the other way around and put it in sport mode, which is really interesting to have on a pickup truck, sport mode. Enough talking though, because this trail boss has some serious competition it needs to put up a good fight against. And our good friend and resident truck expert, Bobby, happens to have one of those. And there's Bobby. Morning, Bobby. Morning, how's it going? Good, you? Good, ready for some trails? Absolutely. You? Can't wait. Let's hit Let's em. go test these things out. I like this thing, but is it, uh, is it better off-road than my Rebel, you think? Let's find out. Which one do you think looks better, first of all? Because we can't start doing anything before we address looks. The looks. Trucks have uh, to be mean. They, they, they're both mean. They both have a, have a presence. There's no doubt about that. I, you know what? For the first time in a long time with a truck review, I'm actually torn. I, I really <laughs> like both equally. I think they have their their perks and they both look I aggressive. I have to agree. I, I can't say that I prefer one over the other. If I didn't own it. For the exterior. How about the interior though? The exterior, the, the Ram wins. The Hands interior down, Ram. the Ram wins, yeah. the Rebel. Like the moment I went in your truck, I'm like, damn, this just looks nicer. Yeah. I mean, that's subjective. You might prefer the Silverado's interior, but uh, yeah. The Ram wins on this review on the interior. Now, you mentioned that your truck is incredibly smooth off-road. Yes, incredibly. The suspension they use on that is really, really smooth. It really helps absorb the bumps. I can only imagine how well it would do if we were to air down the tires by, you know. So there's two uh, aspects when it comes to cons like considering how good a truck is off-road. One is obviously the actual ability, like the clearance, approach, departure angles. Of course break over, all that stuff. But the other one is when you're going over an easier terrain, like the one we are on here today, yeah. it's how comfortable and how much it shakes you inside, right? That's correct. Like how fast you can go without obviously needing to speed a lot, but you know. Yeah. Here's some really bumpy terrain coming up here. See, with these trucks, I mean. Yes. So this one has, sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you. This yeah, yeah. over the LT has mm -hmm. Rancho shocks. It has skid plates, obviously, and a two-inch lift kit. Okay. So, what do you think? Uh, it's not bad. It's good. It's good. It's definitely comfortable. Um, it's manageable. It, it, it feels very similar to my Ram. Um, I, I honestly think that both of these do a great job keeping the occupants comfortable. Um, They're both on the same tires, so yes. Goodyear Wrangler. Oh, that one. That was a good one. Yeah. Oh, you said that the side steps on this one win because yes. they're more like beefed up and uh, they're steel, so they can uh, take a hit or two. Exactly. So they're almost like um, like a rock, uh, like a rock rail, like a like a rocker guard. Uh, they are steel. They're a beefier material than what the Ram is. The Ram is just a. But their existence is it an advantage or a disadvantage when you go off road? Obviously, they protect the truck if you hit it, but they stick out quite a lot. So. Yeah, they they definitely lower the side of the truck by quite a bit. So the ground clearance is not as much because of it, but would you rather have them though, in case you hit something and you know protect Absolutely. the body? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. If there was a way to tuck them up a little bit more, that'd be great. Something to consider. So how much higher is the Rebel versus the non-Rebel Ram? Like, yeah. does it have a factory lift kit? It has a factory one-inch lift kit. One inch, okay. But it also sits on 33-inch tires, so indirectly about two inches. Okay, so it's pretty much the same as this. Yep. How do you like the engine? The engine feels pretty good. Uh, doesn't feel, uh, honestly, I, I don't notice the difference in horsepower between this and the, 
and the ramp. Obviously, these uh, things, they just rev up to like 2,000 RPM and then that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, should you put them on a dyno, you'll see that this one has 355 horsepower versus yeah. 395 in the ramp. And this yeah. one has 383 pound-feet of torque versus 410, 410 in the ramp. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one has an 8-speed automatic gearbox, which is, um, I have to say, pretty good. It's pretty yeah. smooth. Mm -hmm. So in terms of drivetrain, they're... In real life, I think they're really similar. Yes. However, I think this one has a one-up on you in terms of fuel economy. Because I've been averaging 14.9 liters per 100 kilometers. When I actually wow. went to the gas station, um, it completely checked out with um, the pump. It was like a completely accurate reading of 14.7. I'm not there. Which <laughs> <laughs> very rarely happens in cars. Um, yeah, you're like what? Three, four uh, liters higher? Uh, about 17.8. Okay. So, yeah, a little higher. Yeah, when I had a Ram in the previous review, you can click up there and watch the Ram Sport review. Um, in the city, we were like well over 18. Oh, so yeah. 18.5, 19-ish. Yeah. So, yeah. This uh, 5.3 has some clever cylinder management. So, it kind of like deactivates and whatever. It's not as clever as uh, the 6.2 that you can get in 2020, which mm -hmm. does... I don't know how many combinations of uh, activating and deactivating cylinders, but I have to say it, it's uh, powerful enough. It, like I never felt, you know, in need of more power. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's very smooth. It's quiet. I like it. Definitely no. It's definitely a good. Uh, it's it's definitely a good looking car, a good driving car. Sorry, truck. Um, I'm, I'm. If the interior was as nice <laughs> yeah. as the Ram. I think I may have had like a harder time deciding which one yeah. to buy. Especially Usually. considering that price wise are like bang on, right? So yeah. both at Within, 72 grand. Yeah. Yeah, it just feels like in the RAM you get more for your money. Gadgets and stuff, right? Mind you, mind you. If yeah. I was a contractor and I needed something for work every single day and play, I think the Chevy would be the way that it's I'd It's funny go. you say that because the Chevy in terms of utility is a little bit like marginally bigger than the Ram. So it has a bigger bed, more space inside. Like it, it is the more work truck. Yes. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, you can't, I think you can't get stuff like Ram boxes and you know. You can or can't? You can't. And yeah. the Silverado, but obviously the Ram you can. That's, that's why they're called the Ram box. That's it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, the one thing though that I really like in the RAM, and it has nothing to do with the, the looks of the interior, but the usability. So this center console in the RAM, how everything slides back and forth and you have mm -hmm. the, the phone holders and all that stuff. I think Dodge did a, or sorry, RAM did a better job in taking advantage of this space over here. Oh, for sure. So uh, the, the, the that's layout, the one thing. The layout of the interior on that, yeah. given how much crap we generally carry with us on a, oh, <laughs> that on a daily basis. Yeah. It has a better, does a better job concealing all that crap. There's just more spots to put stuff. Yeah. Cool. So in a nutshell, if you would give, you know, 10 is maximum. So mm -hmm. what do you score your RAM? What do you score this? And let's focus on basically off-road ability as, as pickup trucks. Off-road ability? Um, I, would, I would give it a, a solid eight, both of them, to be honest with you. Okay. I, uh, I enjoyed both trucks. Uh, they both, do the job they're supposed to. We got into some rut there. I don't know if you felt it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, definitely enjoyed both trucks. Um, Off-road ability for the weekend warrior that wants to put their family in and go to a nice trail or get to a camp spot or something of that sort, which is what they're advertised as, really. They're, they're both great. And uh, again, the only tipping point for me, as we've already spoken about, is the interior. And the fact that you got a really killer deal on that RAM. Absolutely. And I have a selectable locker. Correct. So this one has a mechanically locking rear differential. That means it's always on, but you have no control over it. One, one wheel spins, the other one will take some torque. Sounds fancy for the truck, we'll do it for you. <laughs> yeah, it does everything for you. Yeah. But this has like a sport it. mode, which yours does not. Sport mode is just 25% more throttle input. Well, whatever sport mode is on a pickup truck anyway, but yeah, yeah, sure. I like both of the trucks. They're definitely nice, but again, the tipping point for me would be the interior. I mean, both cars will do the same functionality, CarPlay, Android Auto. Yeah, they do navigation. the same thing with different ways, right? And exactly. The RAM is a fancier way for sure. Yeah. 
I just oh, feel like and this one doesn't have a panoramic sunroof. I like the panoramic. It has a small one. I can see everything outside. Which is very useful because we can mount our microphone on it, but yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go back to the road. Back on the road and back in the Silverado. Now, what we learned from that little excursion is the Silverado Trail Boss is a 100% match to the Rebel the Ram Rebel. However, Bobby noticed that the Rebel gave him a little bit more confidence doing all that honing off-road, but objectively, the two trucks were on par. And it really helped that they had the same tires because that's a really good way for us to evaluate how all the, you know, 4x4 drivetrain works. Now, he noted that the seat in the Rebel was a little bit better and more supportive, so when we were getting bounced around, um, his seat was kind of, you know, better to be in in the Rebel. And obviously he said that the visual inside the truck is a really big tipping point for him and it makes a big difference and he would pick the Ram over this any day. So in a nutshell, if you need a pickup truck that can go off-road but you are more family-oriented and you need a truck for leisure purposes or towing your boat or just doing fun activities, then probably the Ram Rebel is the truck for you, especially because you can get some crazy good discounts on them. If you are the work type, like a contractor that, you know, works on things in the middle of nowhere and you have to grow through fields to reach your destination, well, it feels like the Silverado is a little bit more rugged and a little bit more of a workhorse. So that's probably where its audience is going to come from. Or, of course, if you're a Chevy fanboy. Overall, the Rebel wins this one, but just by like that much. And obviously, looks of the interior are subjective. You might like this one more. So if you're in the market for either of these trucks, make sure you go check them both out because it's a really close call. Now, if you like this video, please remember to follow Bobby on Instagram right here. And remember to share this video with your friends. Like and subscribe. We know you're watching. Press subscribe. That number is important for us because then we can do more things. It will make us, you know, give us more pitching power for stories. Till next time, take care. Perfect. Perfect.